Alright, so in this video we're going to be putting together um, all the things that we've learned to model sinusoidal functions. Um, so here we have a cos function. So the first thing you want to graph is your base function. So I'm graphing this in yellow. I know it's kind of hard to see, but we're going to graph a ton of stuff, so I want to start light. Um, so cos function starts at 1 and ends at 1 at 360. Halfway in between hits its minimum of negative 1. There's the x-intercepts halfway in between that, right at the quarter and three-quarter marks. So 90 and 270. There's a cos. Put the same thing over here. There's your basic cos function. Great. All right, then the next one you want to graph um, is going to be uh, the, the, K, um, the a value there. So we're going to put in that negative 2. So I like to just go left to right. So I do the amplitude uh, next. And we'll do k and then uh, d and then c at the end. Um, so the negative 2 amplitude, that's going to reflect down, so reflection in the x-axis, and a stretch by 2. X-intercepts stay the same, right? So we get a shape kind of like this. There's our reflected cos. Um, and then over here, same idea, x-intercepts stay the same. Minimum reflects up to be a maximum. Maximum reflects down to be a minimum of negative 2. And connect your dots. There we go. Our next one is going to be the k value. So I'm going to graph this. f of x is negative 2 cos of 3x. So that 3 means I have to fit 3 cos functions between 0 and 360. Um, so 360 degrees divided by 3 is 120. So from here to 120, which is right here, I need to fit a cos function. Then from here to here, I need to fit another one. From here to here, I need to fit another one. Remember the overall shape of uh, your inverse cos function here, or your upside down cos function, um, is like this. So um, it has it starts at minimum, ends at a minimum. Halfway in between is the maximum, right? So halfway between these two points, I need to put the maximum. Halfway between these two would be the maximum. Halfway between these two is the maximum. The x-intercepts fall at the quarter and three-quarter marks. So that right there is a my cos function. Here's x-intercepts at the quarter and three-quarter marks. Uh, x-intercepts here and here. Be careful when you're drawing this. Like, it is really helpful to actually draw the points on. Don't just sort of do a squiggle. Um, if you do just kind of a rough squiggle, you'll get all the wrong points. So make sure you're putting those max and min points on. Make sure you're putting your x-intercepts in here. Um, otherwise, you'll get a kind of crazy-looking graph. Um, you won't be able to read things off, like where the maximums are and the minimums. So put those points in before you draw your, your squiggly wave. Okay, next we need to do the phase shift. So it's going to start to look a little messier here. So we're going to graph this. Our negative 2 cos of 3x plus 30. So remember, a plus 30 actually means we're sliding backwards by 30. Each one of these boxes is 30 degrees, or if that's 90 here, then that must be 30, 60, 90. Um, so I'm going to be taking every point here and sliding backwards by 30. So that slides backwards by 30, that slides backwards 30, this is going to slide over 30, and so on. So I'm going to get something that looks like this. Draw those points on to make it clearer for yourself. And I went through the wrong point there, so right through there, and up here. There we go. I'll draw those points on here. Just sliding everything backwards by 30 there. And there we go. All right, our last step is to draw the plus one. So the plus one means we're going to slide every point here up by one. So that will slide up one, that slides up one, this slides up one, this slides up one, and so on. I'm going to do this one in black so it's a bit easier to see. So I have this point here, this point here, this point here, this point, this point, this point. We have something like this. Uh, draw these points on there so you can see at least where your maximum points are. That really helps. Uh, 
Okay, over here, this slides up one, this slides up one, this slides up one, slides up one. There we go. Um, this guy slides up one, this slides up one, this slides up one. There we go. All right, and that is our final function there. Once you've graphed it, you can actually just read off things like the maximum points right from your graph. Um, so you can see this uh, this maximum here, that maximum is happening at 30 and 3. So that's one of your maximum points. And there's so many more, right? There's one over here, right there. That looks like it's at 150, also a y value of 3. There's negative ones, right? There's one over here. It's a negative 90 and three, and lots more. Um, then you've got your minimum points. Um, so your minimum points here, there's one over here. Uh, that one is at negative 30, and the y value is at negative one. There's one over here that looks like it's at 90 and negative one. There's another one right here that's at uh, 210 and negative one and so on. There's lots more minimums. So reading off max and mins is not too tricky. Um, where it gets really hard, I find, is finding x-intercepts. The problem is that your x-intercept points used to be on the, like they were on the midline, right? And then we slid the midline up. So now the x-intercepts are just like these awkward numbers. Like who knows, where is that 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 actually crosses the x-axis? Where does that cross? Like this one's not, it's between zero and negative 30 somewhere, but I don't know where. This one here is between 60 and 90 somewhere, but it's not like a nice neat point on the graph. Um, so the only way to get x-intercepts in a function like this is really to, uh, to actually solve it algebraically. So that's what I want to show you next. All right, so um, how do we solve this algebraically? Well, in general, x-intercepts always happen um, whenever y is equal to zero. So that's true for any function, right? X-intercepts happen when y equals zero. So what you have to do to solve an x-intercept is make y equal to zero. So make this y value here zero, and then we just do algebra to solve for x. Um, so doing this algebra, um, the first thing I might do is maybe move the one to the other side, right? it becomes negative one over here. Then I might divide both sides by negative two. That gives me a half over here. A half equals cos of three x plus 30. Now we're not really used to solving for uh, uh, the inside of a cos function when there's a lot of stuff in there. We're used to solving things that are more like this, right? We're used to solving things like a half equals cos of theta. That's something we can solve fairly easily. So what if we just call all this stuff in here theta for now, solve this, and then we'll go back to that more complicated situation. So if I was solving this, I would first do theta is the inverse cos of a half. It's actually a special angle here, so you don't need to do this, but um, if you if you had something more fancy than a half, then you would, would need to. Um, so that gives me a theta one. The theta one that comes out of my calculator is 60 degrees. But I know that there's also a related angle. So don't forget, you have related angles. You need to do them too. For cos, your related angle, theta 2, is 360 minus the theta 1, if you remember from the first part of this unit. Um, so theta 2 is going to be 360 minus the 60 that you found, which is 300 degrees. So our two answers to this equation are 60 and 300. That does not mean our x-intercepts are 60 and 300. They're not. That means that theta, all this stuff inside here, is 60 and 300. So what we have to solve next is actually two different equations. One where theta 1 is 60, one where theta 2 is 300. And we can actually solve more equations than this as well. If you remember, there's more related angles than just this. These are the two between 0 and 360, but if we go beyond that, there's more. Um, we could add 360 to this, right? We get a three, theta 3, which is 60 
plus another 360. You can like add three, as many multiples as 360 as you want. So you could have 420 here, right? And, and just keep going and solve that too. I'll just solve two of them so you can see what, what it looks like. Okay, so we all of this stuff here inside your cos function, that's all theta. So we're gonna say all that stuff, three x plus 30, is equal to 60. And then we're solving for x. So we divide both sides by three. That gives me uh, 60 over three is 20. Cancels that over here. So I get x plus 30 equals 20. Subtract 30 from both sides, I get negative 10. And that means that one of my x-intercepts is negative 10 and zero. Um, the other one, you do the same stuff in here, the three x plus 30. That's my theta, right? And that all equals 300. So I both sides by three. And we get x plus 30 equals 300 over three is 100. Subtract three from both sides, um, or subtract 30, sorry, from both sides, and I get 70. So x is equal to 70. Sorry, x equals 70. So my x-intercept here is 70 and zero. I um, mean, those, if you look back at your graph, those are actually the, um, the x-intercepts that you'll see on your graph, but you couldn't have just read them off your graph precisely anyway. You would have known maybe it's near 70, near negative 10, but the only way to actually find out exactly what they are is to solve algebraically, especially with a graph as messy as mine. All right, um, let's look at using a graph that's already been created for us um, to figure out the equation. So when you have a graph already, um, I like to draw the midline on right away. I find it's just very helpful. So here's the midline. It goes right through the middle. And I can use it actually to get the amplitude. So the amplitude is the distance from the midline to the highest point. So from the midline at negative 1 up to the highest point at 2, that amplitude would be 3. That's the distance of 3. Um, but if the numbers are ever awkward and you're having trouble reading that, you can always use your equation. Amplitude is y max minus y min over 2. So I would use the, the highest point, which is 2, minus negative 4, um, that makes 6, divided by 2, and that gives you 3 as well. The next thing we want to find is the wave number k. The wave number means how many cycles fit within 360. So here's one full cycle, and then another one will fit in 360. So there's two. So k is equal to 2. Um, and the period is how long is one of those cycles. So from here to the end of the cycle is 180. But if either one of those is hard to spot, sometimes the period is like an awkward number, it's hard to read off, or sometimes there's a lot of k's a really big number, it's hard to count them all. If that's the case, you can always use this equation. k is 360 over period, or period is 360 over k rearranged in the same equation um, to get the other one if you need one of those. The midline, we can read right off our graph. You can see the midline goes through negative one. But if that was hard to spot, you can always use the equation. The equation for midline is y max plus y min over two. So it's the average of the maximum point and the, the lowest point um, is also the midline. So we can do two plus negative four divided by two also gives you negative one. All right, now we're ready to model this. We're going to try and model each of these as a sine and a cosine function. To do that, you really need to be familiar with what does a sine function look like, what does a cos function look like. So a base sine function starts at equilibrium, goes up, comes down, goes back to equilibrium. A base cos function starts at its max, goes down to its min, comes back to its max again. So what you can do is actually look at your graph and say, do I have essentially a sine function or essentially a cos function or neither. Sometimes you have neither. In this case, it looks like I have essentially a sine function, right? I start at equilibrium, I go up, come back and end at equilibrium. So this is a sine function. I mean, it has a different amplitude, has different k value, has different c, but it, its shape is a sine function. Um, because it has that overall shape of a sine function, that means you don't have to do any phase shift if you model it with a sine function. So it means that I can model it as just a straight up sine function with the right amplitude, with the right k value, and with the right c midline value there, but I don't have to put any phase shift in. That's really, really nice. 
Now, if I want to model it as a cos function, this is clearly not a cos. It does not start out as, at its max. At zero, we're not at the maximum. We're actually at equilibrium, right? So that's definitely not a cosine function. Um, so I'm going to need a phase shift if I model it as a cosine. So what I'd like to do to figure out the phase shift is actually draw on here the analogous cosine. So I'm going to erase a little bit so you can see better here. So you don't have to draw a lot of an analogous cosine. You just have to draw something that starts out at the maximum, which in this case is 2. By the end of the period, which is 180, it has to end at the maximum again, because this is we're drawing an analogous cos. Halfway in between that needs to hit its lowest point. Um, halfway in between the max and the min, I need to hit an x, in, or not an x-intercept, but a midline. Halfway in between max and min on this side, I also need to hit the midline. And that is my analogous cos right there. What I want to do next is see, well, how far do I have to slide that cos to make it look like the function I'm actually trying to model here? And if you see, that is falling halfway between 0 and 90, right? So that's 45 degrees. Um, so it looks like I'm sliding this point over 45. You can check with another point. Here, this point is at 45, and I have to slide it over to 90. So that's also sliding 45. This point's at 90. I have to slide it over to 135 to be right on top of there. So that's sliding 45 as well. So definitely the slide is 45. And I'm trying to slide it a phase shift of 45 forward. So that means I'm going to do a minus 45 in there for, for D. So I model this as a cos. It'll have, of course, the same amplitude, same k, k value. But we're going to be sliding forwards by 45. So I'm going to put in a, that d value of 45 to slide it forward for 45. Let's try another example. Um, so we need to find the amplitude of this. Uh, this time I'll use the equation just to, to practice doing that with you. So amplitude um, is the maximum value. The highest y value you reach is negative 1. Minus the minimum value. The lowest value you reach is negative 4. All over 2. So negative 1 minus negative 4, that's negative 1 plus 4, um, which is 3, divided by 2 is 1.5, or 3 over 2. So the amplitude is 1.5. The wave number is how many of these cycles fit between 0 and 360. And here's one cycle right there. Well, it looks like just one cycle, right? So only one cycle fits between 0 and 360, so k is 1. And that tells me that the period, well, is the length of a cycle, which is 360. So period must be 360. On the midline, let's practice using our formula for this. So that's the maximum y value, which is negative 1, plus the uh, minimum, which is negative 4, divided by 2. Uh, that gives me negative 5 on top, right over 2, which is negative 2.5. Um, let's just check and make sure this looks good, right? Draw the midline on here. Looks like that midline is right at negative 2.5, so our formula worked out. It's good to have more than one way to do things. Okay, now we need to figure out phase shifts, modeling it as a cosine or a sine. Um, so in general, a cos function, a positive cos function, looks like this. It starts out at a max, goes down to a min, comes back to a max. But a negative cos function, so if I put in a negative a value, well, that would start at a minimum, go up to a max, and come down to a minimum again. And that's actually exactly what I have here. So if you look at my graph, I'm starting at the minimum, going up to a max, coming down to a minimum again. I have a negative cos function. So the only one I won't have to phase shift at all is this guy right here. So if I call this negative 1.5, and then I can put in my k values just 1, so I don't have to write anything in at all. We'll C is 2.5, then I don't have to have any D in there. There's no phase shift in there at all. But if I want to model this as a positive cos function, well, a positive cos function would start at its max, end at its max, halfway in between would reach the min, the quarter mark or halfway in between that would go through equilibrium. So that right there is a positive cos function. Um, and then I have to slide that positive cos function. I could just slide it either way. Maybe I'll think about sliding it forwards. If I slide it forwards, I have to slide it forwards 180 degrees before this bump is right on top of that point right there, right until the points are in the right place. So if I make it a positive cos, 
so the amplitude is positive 1.5, then I need a phase shift in here. It would be a phase shift of forwards 180 degrees. Now note that I could have also slid this backwards 180, so I could actually use a, a positive sign in here too to slide it backwards. That would be fine. All right, this is getting a bit messy, so I'm going to erase some things. All right, our last one is if I want to model this as a sine function. So if I'm trying to model it as a sine function, a sine function starts at equilibrium and ends at equilibrium and halfway in between hits equilibrium. Halfway in between those two points, it hits a max. Halfway in between those two points, it hits its minimum. So this right here is an analogous sine function. I want to think about how far do I have to slide that sine function to be right on top of the cos. So how far am I sliding that um, to be on top of the, the purple function, the one I'm trying to model? It looks like I'm sliding it 90 degrees forwards, right? So if I model it as a sine, a positive sine function anyway, then the slide that I need to put in here is 90. So slide it 90 forwards. And again, this is one where you could also slide it backwards. I could slide this point all the way backwards over here so I could slide it 270 backwards and that would actually work too.